I started F2 Wines in uh, 2014. The focus is really on these estate-grown right. grapes. Right. I'm looking to make wines that uh, have a certain type of elegance. Um, I I'm look for balance. Um, definitely my palate is probably a little bit more uh, European than American, but I'm dealing with American grapes, even though it's um, French varietals. All the wines that I make at this point uh, come from grapes that are grown at the Great Oaks Vineyard in Santa Ines, um, and that's a Syrah, uh, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and then Sauvignon Blanc. I'm making the wines in, uh, at Palmina's winery in uh, Lompoc and uh, Steve Clifton uh, became my mentor. He's a rock star out here in the Santa Ines Valley as a winemaker and uh, you know we struck up a friendship and uh, he let me work in his winery and um, is teaching me every day uh, a, a very generous person with his knowledge. Um, the first wine I made uh, was in 2014. It was a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Cabernet Franc. Cab Franc in the Bordeaux region is generally used as a blending grape. There's a, maybe two vineyards that will have a, a real focus on a Cab Franc like uh, Cheval Blanc. But uh, overall, um, that was my thought. Okay, you're going to use this uh, grape as a blending grape because I didn't have that much experience with it and um, over the course of 24 months it was uh, in barrels that was that first vintage 2014 it just became a fantastic wine and I got so excited about it that I said you know what Steve we're not gonna blend it at all we, we're gonna um, just bottle it. Most people uh, that have heard uh, of us here in Los Olivos or in the San Ines Valley have heard of uh, about this um, Cabernet Franc. The idea of not interfering with the process once you have the, uh, the wine in the barrels, um, we really do not like to add or adjust. Uh, uh, my idea is to grow really good grapes, harvest them at a good point, and then I want to taste what we actually grow this year. The Sauvignon Blanc that I'm uh, currently pouring uh, is a um, Sauvignon Blanc, it has been aged for 18 months in neutral oak barrels and that's really pushing the envelope a little bit because uh, you always worry will the wine get a little tired. This wine uh, it drinks like a Bordeaux style white, um, you know, Bo uh, Sauvignon Blanc is used quite a bit in, uh, in Bordeaux and uh, it's very generous on the palate. Um, more tropical in its notes than I would say citrus flavors. So it's a very generous wine. Syrah is a pretty big grape to make a rosé from and we literally tumbled this here for half an hour uh, and then pressed it. Um, again left it in the barrels for 12 months. Again also a long time for uh, a rosé but it um, uh, resulted in a wine that is you know, very generous, uh, maybe bold even for, uh, for a rosé, but um, you can actually uh, approach it from the perspective of a real serious wine in that way and it's not just a rosé, you know. So uh, I love this wine all summer long as a food wine. I'm a foodie, so I, I love to cook and making wines always, um, to me it's crucial that they are somehow, that you can pair them and that they are fun in the context of uh, great food. The next one is a um, Syrah that I make from the same block as this uh, rosé uh, from. So um, harvested about uh, 10 days later, so a little um, more concentration. So the fifth wine is, uh, I would say, a classic uh, Bordeaux blend, 80% uh, uh, Cab, 20% Merlot. Um, this is the only wine I used a little bit of new oak at, uh, on it, and we uh, used uh, French oak. Uh, again, it's a bit of a lighter style of Cab. This is not your Napa Cab, but I don't like the um, oak be the story. The story has to be the grape uh, of that year. The, I really like to look at it from a farming perspective first. I don't think you can make good wine if you don't grow 
good grapes, really good grapes. So and um, and I don't don't like to use now a tool like uh, oak, new oak barrels to cover up all the work that uh, we did in the vineyard. This year, uh, I decided I want to make um, a champagne, or uh, obviously it's not a champagne, it's a sparkling wine. Come January, February, I will make a, a blend of Chenin Blanc and um, the rosé, uh, the Cabernet Franc rosé, and, um, and then it'll go back into the bottles, secondary uh, fermentation, a classic champagne uh, uh, method, champagnoise. Um, and by the next holidays, I think we will have a rosé uh, sparkling. Uh, the tasting room is a um, 108 uh, year old Victorian building um, that has seen many, many, many transformations over the decades. It used to be a place where family lived. What makes this different experience is that you can sit outside. Uh, our tastings are not very formal. Uh, we encourage you to bring some food if you want, to sit in the garden, um, just to enjoy the wines. I don't want this to be just a 10 minute or 15 minute experience. I want to, in, in, you know, more of a, it's a lifestyle. Wine is a lifestyle for me, food is a lifestyle and um, it's always a friendly atmosphere and we love to tell stories. <laughs>